For those trying to start a family, surrogacy is the last resort. It's not only expensive, but a gruelling and emotional process. And that's when it goes well. Sometimes it doesn't. Like the Australian families caught up in the Greek fertility clinic scandal. Their future babies are essentially being held hostage following a police raid, with allegations of human trafficking, fraud and forced surrogacy. Stephen Page is the lawyer for three of those families. Appreciate your time, Stephen. This is just heartbreaking. How are your clients when you speak to them? Traumatised, really, really so upset, not knowing which way is up or down, I, and I can't blame them. They, don't, they haven't been told the truth, and then they see this stuff in the media um, and online. Really, really awful. I know you can't go into specific detail about each of your clients' situations, but can you give us a sense of what they're going through and what's on the line here? If we talk about Australians who are going through this process, we've got Australians who brought their kids back, don't know whether their kids are actually their kids, whether they're genetically theirs. Then we've got Australians who have their children essentially held as hostage um, behind police uh, in Greece. We've got Australians where the surrogates are pregnant and they're worried the surrogates might disappear uh, and never to see their child. Those who have the paperwork that sort of disappeared into the vortex of the clinic and the police in Greece. And then those who are, uh, got their genetic material there, their egg, sperm and embryos, and whether they've been used or not, they don't know because they should have been used or should not have been used, I, said, I should have said, except for their own, their own journey. Uh, and then we've even got Australians who are going to other Greek clinics who are worried that they're going to get caught up in it as well. It's really just a, such an awful mess. You just, you can't even comprehend the distress that these families are going through and, and we know how much they've gone to just to reach this point to be looking at surrogacy. But human trafficking and fraud allegations, I mean did you or your clients have any idea that there were serious red flags with this fertility clinic in Greece? No, and this clinic had been going 30 years. So very high reputation, uh, Greece is very good regulation with surrogacy, you have to go before a judge before the treatment can start, the judge has to approve it, the judge talks to other judges to make sure this particular case can go ahead. There's an IVF regulator uh, looking over the whole of the IVF industry, you'd think it's all highly regulated. Now one of the things that's happened since all these arrests occurred, the head of the IVF uh, regulator has been sacked uh, by the government. Now, whether it's because he was in cahoots or whether he, he was, uh, it's happened on his watch, I don't know. But the fact is that the regulator that's controlling these embryos and sperm and eggs that are now in the tank, they've gone. It's, it's like having the headless chook. We won't need someone in charge. So Australians can know that they can get their genetic material out of that clinic and get it to somewhere else. But, but how, how does that even happen at this point? I mean, if, if police are holding these embryos, um, I mean, we know some of these women are pregnant and, and whose babies they are, and now that's sort of all a little bit murky. What actually happens now for these Aussie families? Yeah, I think it's sort of a waiting game. Uh, we've got smoke everywhere. We've got to wait for the smoke to clear. It's probably going to take a little bit of a while for that to occur. And one of the things that, that is clear to me, however, is that Quite a few of the people who've gone over to Greece for surrogacy are also Greek Australians. Because of course we've got many Greek Australians that have a great affinity to going home to Greece. To understand the culture, understand how it works and now they feel betrayed. Well, I mean, they've been forced to go overseas because there's very few options to do surrogacy here in Australia and that's part of the problem, isn't it? And by going overseas, it's left them exposed. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we had the surrogacy inquiry back in 2016 and it said, let's make all these changes and what's happened since then? Nothing. It's been pathetic. I would have hoped there would have been national laws by now about surrogacy and we haven't had them. So you think that surrogacy should be easier to access in this country? Oh, absolutely. Now, when we've got, for every child born in Australia through surrogacy, four born overseas, or put another way, as many children being born, Australian children being born via surrogacy in the United States than at home, something's wrong with us. We should be able to do it a lot easier here. Stephen, do you have any hope that your clients will one day hold their babies in their arms? Absolutely. They'll get there. And that's what I'll say to everyone stuck in this. You'll get there. Be resilient. 
You've got to be kind to yourselves. But make sure you get some legal advice, good legal advice in Greece. Get some legal advice here, whether it's from me or anyone else, someone who knows what they're doing. But be resilient. If you're tough and focused, you will get there. Don't lose hope. Well, these families have been through enough. Let's hope it's sorted soon. Thank you so much, Stephen.